Welcome back to Charleston County Roadwise. I'm talking with Mary Graham, and she is Senior Vice President here at the Chamber of Commerce. And she knows a lot about the history of the half-cent sales tax in this community. Uh, and so does the Chamber, the local Chamber, because you played a large role in this. The Chamber did, I should say, played a large role in all of this by educating the public. Uh, what kind of educational information was being used at that time? Because there were other cities uh, in South Carolina that were not as fortunate. What was the magic? <laughs> or what did the Chamber do to, to make that happen? We tried, um, you know, every day to be in the media. We d had a, a public relations campaign. We held a press conference every week with a different group of constituents um, to promote passage. We made presentations at every civic group. If there were two people or more meeting together, we asked if we could make a presentation to them. I think we did 66 presentations in the month of October, right before the election in 2004. Um, we also did direct mail directly to voters' homes. We had um, radio ads. Um, you know, we did just about everything we could think did of. Did you pinpoint a certain constituent, a certain group of people that you knew uh, were ready for this kind of thing and would encourage the passage of it? Well, we did um, definitely with our direct mail target um, certain households and certain precincts where we knew we'd have more likely support. You know, one of the other things that was really great was the three mayors of, it was Mayor Hallman, Mayor Summy, and Mayor Riley um, all worked so hard together uh, to help promote passage as well. Uh, Mayor Hallman, I remember, put flyers on the garbage cans oh in Mount my. Pleasant, <laughs> which he took a little heat for, I bet. but he wanted to do everything he could, as well as Mayor Riley and Mayor Summy, to make sure their voters and their particular communities knew that they supported it as well. And the 2006 uh, went through. It did. And uh, that's where we are right now. That's right. In 2006, we went back to voters and said, we want to bond the money so that we can move these projects forward immediately and not have to wait um, as the t sales tax was collected, don't have to wait till you have enough to go build a road. We wanted to do them all so voters could really see the relief. The relief. Do you think the recession has hurt any in collecting that penny from businesses well, Charleston, and constituents, their, their customers rather? Certainly the revenues coming from the sales tax are down right now, but uh, Charleston County did a great job from the beginning of being very conservative in um, projecting how those monies were going to be coming in each year. And so they, they allowed for there to be some downturns in the economy along the life of the half cent sales tax. So we're, we're fine in the long term. T tell us again about why it was important to bond that money, uh, especially in light of inflation. Well, that was, um, you know, when you vote for something like a half cent sales tax as a voter, you want to see that whatever you voted for happen in a hurry. You don't want to wait 20 years, which the sales tax is a 25-year tax. So if we had to wait and pay as we go, you know, many voters would get very weary waiting on the road that they travel on every day mm -hmm. to be improved. Um, the other part about bonding was that we were able to go ahead and do the projects, um, you know, up front, and you save money doing that way. A inflation, as you just mentioned, the cost is only going to get higher as we move through the year, so to be able to do them now instead of having to wait saves taxpayers money. Most politicians believe that folks, the community, is unwilling to pay a tax. We are a no-tax state mm -hmm. in many ways. I think about the gasoline tax that has never gone up, it's 15, 16 cents. The rest of the country is somewhere in the 30s, 40s and they're doing a lot more than we have. So we don't like taxes, no. especially tax increases. How did you do that? How did the chamber do that in light of the fact that we're not interested in taxes in South Carolina and Charleston? Well, we found that when you go out and talk to voters and you can show them, for example, a list of the roads that were specific projects that were going to occur, that would be funded through the sales tax, when they knew how that money was going to be spent, and they're on roads every day that are congested trying to get to and for, uh, from work and, and wherever they're trying to travel, they understand the need and they understand exactly how that tax was going to be allocated and they'd support it. And it becomes a personal issue, I guess. Yes. And they saw the need. 
They did see the need. Sometimes I look at the highway work that's going on right now under the sales tax and wonder, are we antiquated here? Have we built too late? How do you feel about that? Well, in South Carolina, uh, we're not only a no-tax state, but we also have very limited ways we can fund projects like roads. And so um, the sales tax was really the only way locally we could raise the revenues um, to be able to do these projects ourselves. So really, Charleston County was very progressive in moving this sales tax forward and putting in the plan that we do. Why 25 years? 25 years and $1.3 billion, I believe, is we expect to raise that amount of money in 25 years. Why 25 years? Was I, that not to scare the voter or something? That was one of the issues the Chamber had from the beginning um, that we, were, we didn't like about it. Um, a half a cent for 25 years, why not a full penny for 10 years, for example? Um, but, you know, voters did support it, so that's the good news. Um, we still have another half a penny out there that voters could approve for additional funding, and, and we believe we're getting close to that time in the near future where, where we're going to push the county to <laughs> let's go get that other half cent because we've got a lot more need in terms of road and um, well, infrastructure. I, that's what I wanted to ask you. What sort of argument can you make now uh, to the public who did give the half cent and other counties around us, Dorchester for one, has the penny. Yes. What, what kind of argument can the Chamber of Commerce give to the public if they were to take on a project like this again? How would you sell it? Well, part of how we sell it is being able to point to the great projects that Roadwise has built. And we've got wonderful examples, the Cooper River Bridge, the Palmetto Parkway, now Johnny Dodds and Mount Pleasant. Um, um, Folly Road intersection improvements. There are completed projects out there that voters drive on every single yeah. day. And that helps convince voters to support an additional tax somewhere down the road. You think so? If you put it back into their homes and the places where they live, it seems like the voters are more willing. Uh, and maybe that will work again. I'm going to talk more with you about where we stand now with the half set sales tax in place knowing that we probably needed the other half of the penny and right now we very specifically need the other part of the penny.